Hello planet people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm the Soul Scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about the, the seed schedules that you see all over the interwebs, such as mine that I've made for various different number of zones, and how to exactly read them when it comes to seed starting. So we're gonna be looking at the seed packets themselves, a flower packet, and then a vegetable packet, because they actually follow two different types of rules and how that applies to this schedule for your zone. Now, one thing that you may have noticed with the zone packets that I made was that I lumped together zones. So I did zones two and three, four and five, five or six and seven. And the reason for that is because when it comes to seeds themselves, zone is completely variable. Technically, someone in zone three, if they had the proper lighting and the proper setup, could start their seeds at the same time as someone in zone seven. So it's very arbitrary. And you can actually talk to people in greenhouses as to when they start their seeds, and they probably start them before people in seven and eight or even thinking about starting seeds within their home. And it's because they have the proper setup to do so. Now, with that being said, it does work with flowers. You can start flowers earlier, especially if you have the lighting and you have the room to do it. The problem comes with vegetables and specifically certain types of vegetables that don't enjoy being transplanted. If the plant is okay with transplant and it goes through very little or no transplant shock and you've mastered the art of hardening off your plants for your zone and placing them outdoors, there's no reason why you can't start plants earlier. It just means that you're going to have maybe the fruit or the vegetable earlier in the year to eat or you may have more if you have an indeterminate variety. You also will have flowers sooner in the year, which means you may be feeding the pollinator sooner in the year and your yard will just look better. One thing to keep in mind is that all plants have a life cycle. So if a plant you know gets a little bit ratty looking towards the end of the year and you know the life cycle generally ends within three to four months, it may not be a good idea to start that plant early because you're just going to have a very raggedy looking garden by the time August or September rolls around, which pretty much all of us do just because of the heat and our boredom that comes eventually with gardening. So that is why I lumped my zones in groups because two and three have pretty identical matches, four and five have pretty identical matches and so on and so forth. My charts leave about two weeks, give or take, before or after when you could start these seeds. Again, it's all dependent on what kind of setup you have. Later seeds are going to transplant better, and if you haven't mastered the art of hardening off or tra reducing transplant shock, I suggest starting the seeds later in the year rather than earlier in the year. Trust me, it's gonna save you a huge headache. Ella is talking in the background. I apologize. She's enjoying the sunlight that's out right now. Let's jump into how to read the packets and how they sit on the chart on this side. If you guys want more tips and hacks on this, I actually do have an Instagram page that you guys can follow. On that Instagram, I am posting saveable, book tabable, screenshotable type uh, articles or graphs that you can save to use and they are zone specific and they're gonna help you with, with these here. But if not, let's jump into it. <laughs> okay, so let's start with flowers. And flower packets, you'll notice on the front, there's no days factor, which vegetables have, and we'll get into that a little bit later. If we flip the packet over, on the back side, generally up here or in this chart down here, it's going to say weeks, before last frost. So it's going to tell you the weeks you should put this or sow this before last frost. The reason for this is because this company wants you to have flowers during summer. It doesn't want you to have flowers at the end of summer. It wants you to have flowers in, in the middle of summer. So that's why they tell you weeks before last frost. This one, for example, says 
start indoors four to six weeks before last frost. So on my chart, it has your frost free date. You can Google your frost free date for your zone if you like, and you're just going to count back the number of weeks from there. Four to six weeks for zone three, for example, would be beginning of May into March. That is when you would start these zinnias here. Now with winter sewing, or choosing packets that work for winter sewing, you're going to want to aim for any packet that says four weeks, the four to six weeks area before last frost. Especially if it's a warmer spring, you can place these outside and I'm going to do a winter sewing video. I'm actually going to try winter sewing this year, but zinnias, for example, would be a great crop that you could winter sew with because we're not working with frozen soil. We're working with a miniature greenhouse style soil and therefore we'll get germination outdoors approximately one more month before your frost free date appears. One thing to note is the days to sprout. So if it says five to seven days to sprout, you technically could push this seven to five weeks before last frost date. So keep that in mind when looking at your flower container or your flower ones. The highest I've seen is 14 to 16 weeks before last frost date. And that one with, with pink pompous grass is what it was. And I am doing pink pompous grass this year. But that was the latest I've ever seen was 12 to 14 weeks for that grass. That has already been started for me because uh, each zone is approximately here right now with regards to weeks out from last frost. Okay, so this is a vegetable packet and what the vegetable packet says. And one thing you will note on every vegetable packet is this days to maturity on the top or on the corners. I'll just grab another one here. Both these brands has the zones on this bottom corner. Um, sometimes they're in the top corners, but it's days to maturity. And what this is referencing is your growing degree days, GDD. And that is specifically ideal days for growth. That means transplant shock days should be factored in. Future Ashley here. So I'm editing this realizing that I didn't mention this. However, I believe it's necessary to comment on. GDD is how I actually formulated my planting schedules, but I use the terminology of zones because it's the middle ground language between me and the average gardener. Now I use the Government of Canada maps to design the actual planting schedule. And if you know how to read the maps, I encourage you to actually use this method to make your own. Now, if you want a video on this, please let me know in the comments down below. Cloudy days should be factored in. That also means that depending on your zone, this will vary as to when you may or may want not want to start these inside. Some, depending on the growing degree days, most zones in Canada, if it is 60 or less growing degree days, then you are safe planting these outdoors. 60 or less growing degree days also are great winter sowing crops that you can actually start in containers and anything that gets up to that 7580 could also be winter sown if it is hot enough outside or if you're able to provide some sort of insulation for your winter sowing setup. Keep that in mind. You do not want the foliage to freeze. Now, why it says dates to maturity is because unlike flowers, we actually want to harvest from this. So we not only need it to flower, but we also need it to produce fruit and then we need that fruit to flush out so we can harvest from the plant. That is why it has days to harvest. However, if you flip the packets over, they do typically also at the top of the package have weeks before last frost date. Again, you can reference the list as to what zone you're in and when your last frost free day, free day is approximately and then tally back from there. The difference is that in the case of some of these vegetables, you may want some seeds sooner in the summer or sooner in the year. So you may want to plant in waves. So for example, with 
this um, red pear tomato. It says six to eight weeks before last frost. For So for zone three, um, that would put me beginning of March, generally, a bit into April, halfway through April is when I would want to start tomatoes and peppers, for example. Now, you can start them before that if you wanted to. Again, if you have the proper setup, space, lighting, go ahead, it's fine. But what I would do is I would actually do it in waves. So I would start one wave and then I would start another wave about a month later and then another wave a month after that because then you won't get a bunch ripening at the same time and you'll be able to have some give and take. So that is it. That's all I got for you guys. I hope this helped you out. I know I personally was confused when I started gardening um, as to when to start some of this stuff. I worked in research greenhouses, which are drastically different than home gardening because you have a greenhouse set up. You do just kind of start it whenever you want. Like you can start stuff in November, for example, and it's not going to harm anything within the greenhouse. And then it's more on the gardener's um, end or their side, the buck gets passed to the gardener in order to transplant it properly into the garden or to reduce transplant shock when possible, or simply selecting plants that you know will transplant better than others. So I was a little confused by how these laid out and how it applied to my zone. But honestly, the best way to do it is to follow the frost free weeks before frost free um, nomenclature on the actual packet and then work back from there. I find that easier than using the date range because the date range is pretty arbitrary. And what I mean arbitrary is if you were to take um, I'm gonna get a little ranty here, but if you were to take, for example, these Catskill Brussels sprouts, and you notice that it says 90 days, but it has like an asterisk beside it, and they all have asterisks beside it, is because it's 90 growing degree days. And it's referring to ideal days, which is what this plant needs to grow. So if you take that, and then you added that 90 days to this six to eight weeks before last frost date, you would logically think that you could harvest your Brussels sprouts if you planted them, for example, zone three, if you planted them in June on June 1st or June 10th-ish, if you decided to plant outdoors then, that you should be harvesting Brussels sprouts by July 10th, like literally 30 days after, because it only needs 90 days, right? So by that logic, like you should be harvesting mid-July, mid which isn't the case. You don't harvest Brussels sprouts until much later in the year because they're not ready. And that's because of the growing degree factor, growing degree day factor. So you're going to have uh, cloudy days and then you're also going to have um, days that are just with transplant shock or down days for your plant. And that's all going to factor into how long it takes for your plant to produce fruit or vegetable. So I personally was always hung up on the days to harvest, but through school, like university and stuff and working with producers, things like wheat and barley also have the growing degree, fa growing degree day factor. They don't say days to harvest on the pamphlets or the packages or the elevator doesn't say days to harvest. They tell you growing degree days and then you know the growing degree days for your area and then based on that is when you actually put it out into the field now with vegetables for whatever reason days to harvest it just tweaked my mind and i just couldn't wrap my brain about it but once i start sat down and started thinking about it i was like oh the, the days to harvest really isn't that helpful because it's very misconstrued because it there's so many factors that play into that so 90 days for Brussels sprouts is very generous and it usually is much, much more than that. So you know what I mean? So frost weeks before, weeks tell frost free dates or your weeks before your frost free date. That is what you want to follow. You don't want to follow the 90 day rule 
because that would mean in my zone I could plant Brussels sprouts outdoors. Anyone in zone three knows you cannot <laughs> plant Brussels sprouts outdoors and get a harvest in the same year. So yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Share this with anyone that you think would benefit from it. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.